Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Burnsville Mayor Elizabeth Kautz, and I have the honor of serving as a past president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. In June, 369 mayors from all 50 states through the U.S. Conference of Mayors urged Congress to pass the bipartisan framework that was negotiated by President Biden and the group of Republican and Democratic senators. I am honored to be joined today by business leaders representing Metro and Greater Minnesota and mayors from across the political spectrum and across the state united in our support for the federal bipartisan infrastructure framework now being considered in Washington, DC. I'd like to introduce you to the speakers today. You'll hear from each of them and we commit to keeping our comments brief. So there will be ample time for question and answers and discussion. On the call are Edina Mayor, Jim Hublin, Vice Chair of the Standing Committee on Transportation for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Wilmer Mayor, Marv Calvin. Duluth Mayor, Emily Larson. Rochester Mayor, Kim Norton. Minneapolis Regional Chamber President and CEO, Jonathan Weinhagen. And West Central Steel President and CEO, Jeff Patterson. Ladies and gentlemen, our state and nation are at a crossroads. As we emerge from the pandemic, we recognize that we must invest in our country and in our people, create good paying jobs, tackle the climate crisis and grow our economy. The bipartisan infrastructure framework is a critical step in accomplishing these objectives. That is why we are here today to call on our Minnesota delegation and the entire Congress to move forward with this legislation. You see the broad based support for this infrastructure plan in the group gathered here today. Infrastructure is not a partisan issue. Infrastructure is how government produce economic growth. Building and maintaining highways Railroads, airports, and water systems is how government produce economic growth. Now is the time to fix what is broken and build what needs building. The economic growth that follows will provide a return on investment that will reverberate for generations. You see on the local level here in Burnsville, we have been working for years on Highway 13 between 35W and 101. It's a critical economic highway for the second largest inland port in the state of Minnesota, the Port of Savage. It is critical for moving agriculture and grain on the highway, on roads, on railroads, and on the river. This is important and this is why Considering and passing the infrastructure framework is important for us in Burnsville. We also have bridges that have structural failures that we need to address. And so it is important that Congress address the infrastructure framework and pass it. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the mayor of Edina, Mayor Jim Hovland. Thank you, Mayor Coutts. That was a wonderful introduction and I think a wonderful backgrounding for folks that are tuning in today to hear about our support in Minnesota of the transportation infrastructure framework that was created in a bipartisan way. I'm a Dyna Mayor, Jim Hovland, and I am honored to be serving as the standing chair, the vice chair of the Standing Committee on Transportation for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. The transportation investments included in the bipartisan transportation framework would be transformative just like the investments that our grandparents and great-grandparents made before us that were transformative for our generation and generations yet to come. Of the $579 billion in new investments proposed over an eight-year period of time included in the plan, transportation systems make up more than half of that amount of $312 billion. 
The plan is the largest federal investment in public transit in history and is the largest federal investment in passenger rail since the creation of Amtrak. It is also the single largest dedicated bridge investment since the construction of the interstate highway system, which is really something to be thinking about. And in Minnesota, of course, we know the criticality of those investments in bridges. This legislation would repair and rebuild our roads and bridges with a focus on climate change mitigation, resilience, equity, and safety for all users, including cyclists and pedestrians, those non-motorized users. As Minnesotans, we know firsthand the value of investing in a strong transportation network. Our tough winters require additional investments in our roads, bridges, and highways, and our transportation system keeps our state inter uh, state's interconnected economy working strong. So folks, this is our chance to create again an infrastructure system that is world leading. For years and years, in fact, for decades, we led the world and showed the world how we could move people and goods in the fastest and most efficient way possible. And now as Member Kaut, or Mayor Couch said, we have almost 400 mayors across the country, all 50 states supporting this bipartisan infrastructure framework. And if you look at the polling, people across the country are vastly in favor of the changes that we're supposed to be making, that they want us to be making in these infrastructure systems. Our infrastructure system is no longer even in the top 10 uh, globally. We need to move people and goods faster than ever before. And for us, transportation should be part of uh, life and not part of effort. So we all join together today in the state of Minnesota, joining our colleagues from across the country, other places that have already had these uh, press conferences, including Ohio and Georgia, in encouraging Congress to move forward and pass a bipartisan infrastructure bill that will create a system of uh, opportunity for people for generations to come. Thank you, Mayor Coutts. And I'm gonna turn now to Jonathan Weinhagen. Well, thank you, Mayor Hovland and Mayor Coutts. I'm always humbled to join our mayors. Um, you know, among the many things that I respect about each of you is the deep connection that you have to your business community. I would argue it may be the closest connection um, that businesses have to local government. Um, so you're hearing the same thing that I'm hearing from CEOs and business leaders and owners every day. Um, they're enthusiastic and bullish about the way our state and nation are coming out of the pandemic, headed into an economic recovery. But they also recognize the political impl implications and they want lawmakers of both parties to take decisive action and help restore and strengthen trust in our democracy by moving forward this once in a generation investment in American infrastructure. The post-World War II era saw the creation of our nation's interstate system. In a post-pandemic era, we have the opportunity to reinvigorate our roads and bridges, invest in transit, airports, broadband, water infrastructure, and more to put Americans to work and lay a foundation for all of us to win the 21st century. The mayors that I'm joined by today and mayors all across our state and country know that thriving communities need thriving businesses. And we not only need to recover, but need to find ways to thrive as our economy continues to come back. Our region's business community will strongly advocate with our state's congressional delegation, many of whom are already great champions for this bill, and to all members of Congress to pass this bipartisan deal and get building back better as soon as possible. Um, with that, I am honored to welcome and introduce Mayor Marv Calvin from the great city of Wilmer. Who also gets to be the first member on mute. So you get that designation, Mr. Mayor. You know what, I was gonna be so careful not to do that. Uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan, but also thank you to Mayor Coutts for her uh, welcoming comment to us. I am Wilmer Mayor Marv Calvin. And I am the mayor of a regional center in West Central Minnesota, approximately 100 miles west of Minneapolis, St. Paul. In our regional centers and the rural parts of our state similarly face significant infrastructure challenges that you've already heard about. Our rural communities play an important role in our nation's economy. They are home to a majority of US manufacturing, farming, and ranching. American agricultural provides the food and fiber for our country and the world, creating jobs for millions of America, good paying jobs, not only in the metro area, but also in outstate Minnesota. Deteriorating, deteriorating rural infrastructure, however, threatens the competitive leadership of American agriculture and other industries important to rural uh, communities. Investment in broadband, road, 
Inland waterways, ports, and railways are particularly important to Greater Minnesota. This bill funds some of those initiatives in a dramatic way. One of the problems that we have out here in rural Minnesota is our broad broadband and our reliable internet. Our farmers need to have their computers and their tractors and have to drive into McDonald's to connect to a wireless connection so they can download the data into a database. Uh, that needs to be corrected and this bill does that, addresses that. We've been very fortunate in Wilmer in that we were able to uh, secure federal, local, and private industry funding for a $50 million rail Y on the west side of Wilmer that will increase the transportation of grains and goods from the Western United States to the Chicago area. And we're very thankful for the work that has happened there. This is an, an example of what can be done when we work collaboratively in a nonpartisan way. I also want to point out that our roads uh, from uh, our Highway 23 is going to allow us to have four lane access to the interstate system that has been talked about by some of the other mayors today. And now it is my pleasure to turn it over to West Central President and CEO, Jeff Pattison. Thank you, Marv. Good morning. I'm Jeff Pattison, President of West Central Steel. Um, our company is located in Wilmer, Minnesota. Uh, we employ about 140 people. Uh, we just completed our 10th expansion, uh, giving us uh, 300,000 300, square feet of manufacturing facility. Uh, we, what we do is we help manufacturers grow uh, by providing them carbon steel, steel parts. Uh, we purchase steel from steel mills throughout the country, and all that steel is delivered to us via um, trucking, rail, and barge. Um, then we turn around and sell the product uh, to manufacturers and fabricators in the five-state area. Our customers' parts are produced with 20 precision machines, all purchased from around the world. We are an inf infrastructure dependent business. We depend on the reliability and safe, safe infrastructure. We see the impact of deteriorating infrastructure as we're driving down the road every day, delivering product to our customers. From an outstate out Minnesota's perspective, in infrastructure allows our community to thrive. It makes it easy to do business with other communities, provides goods to people and expands the geographic reach of our product. In closing, making the investment in infrastructure is not a political issue, it's an economic issue. In our state and nation is going to have to thriving businesses, it's imperative that we invest in robust and sustainable infrastructure. Thank you. And next I'd like to introduce Mayor Emily Larson. Thank you, Jeff, and good morning, everybody. My name is Emily Larson. I am mayor of the incredible, beautiful city of Duluth, Minnesota, and it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you to my colleagues for the invitation. Thank you to our leaders across the state. It's not every day that we get the chance to, you know, set aside time to find the many, many things that we have in common, but to really address them in a collaborative way. And so I'm really uh, pleased to be here. I'm going to focus on just a couple of different things, key areas of this infrastructure proposal and this framework. In the city of Duluth, we are deeply committed to our infrastructure uh, we passed a dedicated sales tax to address our streets and roads. I think we're one of the only uh, cities in the state that actually has fully dedicated um, opportunities for that now. We have addressed our water system, our stormwater, our runoff. Um, so we, we are big in infrastructure here. Uh, I'm deeply excited about this framework, about what can happen uh, when and if our Congress moves forward to invest in communities across the state. Because I think as we all know, a pothole, uh, broadband, uh, these are not Republican or Democrat issues. These are not about whether you're in the majority or the minority. These are the everyday things that make life possible for people across the country. And local leaders really, know um, the impact of that. And we don't have time to do politics on things like infrastructure. So I'm just going to focus on a couple of key areas. First, our ports. Many people know the city of Duluth because we're on the greatest of the Great Lakes, uh, Lake Superior. It's a beautiful place. We are a city of 86,000 residents, but 6.7 million tourists. And many tourists enjoy coming to see the lake and seeing the ships on the lake. But many people don't know much about the actual working uh, port element of the lake. Uh, our Duluth port 
airport and its 21 different terminals support 8,000 jobs, $1.4 billion in economic activity. It's shared by two cities, the city of Duluth, the city of Superior. And this one port is the largest inland seaport in the United States. And we then ship via rail across the country. So many of the products that we all benefit from come in right here through the uh, port of the city of Duluth. We need to make improvements to help ensure that this continue, that people are able to get the resources and products that they need, that we are able to import and export our resources, whether that is taconite, whether that is lumber, whether that is um, commercial or fabricated goods um, across the world so that we can keep our community and our entire state strong for the 21st century. I'm hoping that with this legislation, we're able to expand access to deep water shipping channels and uncongested connections to our highways and our roadways. Uh, right now, we have a $250 million project happening with MnDOT at our intersection, which is lovingly called the Can of Worms, which is where we are constantly shipping people, tourists, um, you know, big rigs filled with all of the goods that have just come in and off those ships. Um, and so the investments in infrastructure for us are about connectivity, but it is about economic development. And on climate change, this infrastructure bill will focus directly on building in a way that will both help leverage opportunities for good jobs and put our nation on a clearer long-term plan moving forward. It would create a first of its kind infrastructure financing authority that will leverage billions billions of dollars into clean transportation and clean energy. And we know that one of the many areas that we need to address as a country it involves transportation and the energy that goes into it. It would make the single largest investment in addressing legacy pollution in American history, a cleanup effort that will generate good paying union jobs at living wages and advance environmental justice. And it would help prepare more of our infrastructure for the impacts of climate change as we have seen here in Duluth and are constantly adjusting to uh, the impacts of hurricane force winds on an inland lake of massive flooding that supposedly is a 500 year flood that happens every five years now. Um, it's really significant the impact that we see here of climate change and just weather on our infrastructure. We need help from the federal government to be able to provide the supports that our residents, our businesses our communities need to continue to be healthy and thrive. So many more things that we're tracking with this infrastructure bill. Again, the lift bridge is not Democrat or Republican. Um, lead service lines don't care whether someone's in the majority or the minority. This is about protecting safety, access, public health, and economic development very hopeful about this framework, very excited about our champions here on the call and around the state of Minnesota. And one of them is the, uh, the next mayor we get to hear from, uh, my friend and colleague in Rochester, Minnesota, Mayor Kim Norton. Thank you so much, Mayor Larson and all the mayors. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here talking about these important issues. Um, and before uh, we go to the questions, and I'm sure the press will have them, I'm gonna highlight just a, a couple issues here. Even before the pandemic, and especially as we've moved through it, our business, labor, and community organizations have been known for resiliency, creativity, preparation, and innovation. As the mayor of Rochester, Minnesota, home to Mayo Clinic, the ability to collaborate depends on our capability to be connected. That requires, that requires electronic and physical infrastructure for everyone, especially healthcare. As we've seen with the pandemic, Mayo Clinic and partners took immediate action to tackle, tackle COVID-19 and has been a vital asset in assisting Rochester, the state, and the country in responding and getting back on our feet. The bipartisan infrastructure framework focuses on the basic public services that government provides our businesses and our residents, like roads and sewers, streets, transit, broadband, and other key items. Um, and, that, and they're all involved in the key to the future that supports the ability to move resilient, innovative, and, and to allow us to, to flourish economically. This is a great example of how federal partnership can achieve a far greater outcome than we in local government could do on our own. We're working together to come out of this pandemic, ready to build prosperity across our region, and we need to move forward with a bold plan to make a difference for our future. 
what we've all talked about is movement, movement of people, movement of product, and I can't find a great P word, but movement of words and ideas. And maybe that P word should be promise, the promise for our future. With that, I'm going to uh, just open it up for questions from the media. Great, thanks, uh, Mayor Norton. And uh, for the members of the press who are here, uh, just to keep this kind of orderly, what we'd ask is if you just go into the chat and just chat to all of us and write your name in the chat function and I'll call on the reporters in the order in which you put your name in the chat feature uh, and then we'll spotlight you, uh, give you the opportunity to just uh, turn on your microphone and your video if you'd like uh, and ask uh, the mayors and business leaders uh, that are joining us here today your question. So uh, fire away, uh, we'll watch the chat box and uh, uh, call on whomever would like to uh, kick things off with the first question here. And it's uh, Tori, Tori Van Oot uh, with Axios. Uh, Tori, if you'd like to uh, go right ahead, um, please hey. uh, ask your question. Thanks, good morning, everyone. Um, sorry if I missed this, is there, you know, an estimate for under this framework, how much Minnesota specifically, Minnesota state and local projects could get, like either an estimate or like an ask, a wish list of what you're hoping to see um, from this. I know we're still waiting for some details, but from the, the framework altogether, what, what the money here could look like. Sure, maybe uh, Mayor Kotz, do you wanna take that please? Thank you, Brian and uh, Tori. We don't know what that estimate is going to be. We are asking Congress to support the framework. Now they're going to have to take a look at that and then what, how that money is going to be put in place is up to Congress. Right now, we don't know. We want them to work together on, um, on the infrastructure framework. You know, Brian, if I could jump in for just one second on this question. You know, I think we can all anticipate some level of competitiveness as previous infrastructure bills um, have proven to be. And what I hope people are seeing with this great group of leaders from all across our state, that we are ready to compete. The minute that this infrastructure bill gets across the finish line, um, these leaders will be coming together and there will be a collective wish list to advance the state of Minnesota um, and have an impact on all of our communities. Great. Tori, any follow up there? You're good. No, Back that was out, good so. yeah. I didn't know if there was like a, you know, in some of the other other spending Mayor, bills, kind of like a formula or something that you Mayor, might extrapolate. But yep, no, I'm good. Mayor Couch, can you hear me, Mayor Couch? This is Tom Cochran. Can you hear yes, me, Mayor? I, I can. Yes. Yeah. Tom, uh, thank you we, so much it's, for being with us. No, well, thank you, uh, and I appreciate the listening in. Uh, we have we we are in the age old battle in any kind of infrastructure uh, bill uh, to make certain that any kind of uh, provisions we can insert relative to keeping the money to come straight to the cities rather than go to the state houses and we never see it. So this is an ongoing battle of, you know, for the last 30 or 40 years. Inside the, um, inside the president's proposal though, there are, there is increased funding for mass transit and of course uh, electric stations for, for uh, you know, uh, cars, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of local things in here, but uh, this is a very, very good question because contrary to the rescue bill, uh, we had a very specific formula, as you remember, getting money directly uh, to cities. And But we're, we have not given up. When we met with the president uh, last week, uh, well, we had mayors there with governors. And of course, we are continuing to say localism is very important and we'll be monitoring that, doing everything we can to make sure that they we don't we don't want all the money. We want our share at the local level. So localism is our theme on this. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Tom. And for I'm our uh, for our local Minnesota reporters, can you just introduce yourself? So I'm the I'm the uh, I'm the executive director and CEO of the United States Conference of Mayors, and uh, I work for Mrs. Couch. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, Tom's a boss. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, and uh, next up, uh, Dana Ferguson uh, with Forum News Service. Uh, Dana, 
I would go ahead and open your line and ask a question. Hi, right thank you so much for taking my question. Um, Tom touched on this a little bit, but I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit more broadly to what you're hearing from the delegation so far. And if you think there's a unique role that mayors have or can play in getting Congress a little more interested in passing this proposal. Uh, Dana, are you talking about the Minnesota delegation? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do know that uh, most of the people in our delegation, the Minnesota delegation, are in support of the infrastructure framework. Now, um, individually, I have not talked with all of them, but I do know that our uh, Congresswoman, Angie Craig, is, is supportive of it. Now, I don't know, um, Brian and Jonathan, if you've heard from our two senators, but it appears to me that they're very much in support of the infrastructure framework. Jonathan? As Senators Klobuchar and Smith are both very supportive of the infrastructure framework and the opportunity it would bring to the state of Minnesota. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. All right, great. Any other Sorry, questions? Just, or, I, yeah, Dan, if you want to follow up on that. Just wondering too, if any of the mayors present might be able to touch on uh, the unique role that they play and whether they feel like bringing this as a group has any additional benefit um, in getting it across the finish line. Thank you. Oh, Dana, I can, all I can of take us. some of that. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Go ahead, go go ahead uh, Mayor Larson. No, go ahead. Unmute. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kraut. Sorry to step on your toes there. Um, you know what I can say, Dana, is that I have oh, I have always found that when people when we create these kind of unexpected coalitions around shared issues, it always has some kind of impact. We don't always know, or we aren't always able to calibrate the exact moment we were able to move someone. Um, I often tell people that part of my job as mayor of Duluth is to make it very, very difficult for people to say no to this community when we need something uh, by providing the testimony, the facts, the story that goes with it. And um, what, I, what I think is really true about mayors, I mean, everybody, Everybody's job is really challenging, especially through a pandemic, especially trying to figure out how to lead uh, communities or businesses in this intersection that we find ourselves in of so many issues. Um, but the one thing that is, I think, universally true about a mayor's position is that it's a very intimate connection with a community. People really feel trust with their local electeds and they may not like a certain you know, action, they may disagree on something. That's different than feeling connected and feeling like they have a voice. And so there is something that mayors are able to offer. I know exactly what my community is thinking because I am living here, I'm shopping here, I'm moving through here, you know, my kids are here. I mean, there's just, there's so much direct contact and I do think that we're able to amplify the very basic impact and a very simple message uh, to people who are serving us in Washington who don't have the benefit of being here every day because their job is not here every day, um, but their people are here every day. And so we get to amplify that message. And I do think it's helpful. I, I have also found that, you know, the work of mayors is truly not about positioning around um, you know, a political party. It, you, we have to read the room. We have to know the variables we have to work with, but we don't have time to really think through um, some of those other things. So we're really able to deliver a sharp message. And I think for us, what I heard today, which was really neat, is all these very different ways in which this infrastructure framework will impact daily residents. And, you know, it's important for me that we have a strong Rochester and a strong Wilmer and a strong Edina and a strong Burnsville because that, you know, we're all connected in some way through, through this. And um, so anyway, hopefully that helps round out a little perspective for you, Dana. Yeah, I also just want to add that uh, when you look at the people who are gathered here, it's businesses and mayors. So are we going to make a difference? Yes, we are. And how are we going to do that is that we're going to be working hard together because together we can make things happen. And um, we have our business community agreeing on the same things that infrastructure is important to all of us. And uh, so we will be working together and we will be um, 
uh, engaging with our congressional delegation and also in Washington through the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other reporters uh, like to ask a question? We do have time uh, for another question or two, if you would like. So uh, this is your opportunity and we're happy to have the conversation. So we'll leave it, uh, leave the screen open there for a, a few uh, minutes. Uh, if anybody else would like to join in, that would be great. Otherwise, if we have preemptively answered all of your questions with the remarks and and uh, the couple of questions that we had, that's okay too. But just want to give uh, give the other media representatives who have joined us here a chance to to type if you like to uh, like to get in the line. Brian, this is Jim Hogland. I could make a comment here. Uh, you know, some folks think that this is going to be difficult. And we've been emphasizing the bipartisan nature of this. And I think that's critically important that we do. Uh, and I've seen it locally uh, in the region here. I work uh, in conjunction with about 30 other, 34 other people, the majority of whom are local elected officials running the Transportation Advisory Board of the Met Council. And we've got uh, every uh, political stripe, I would say, on that uh, committee, whether they're elected officials or they're citizens serving at large a particular interest, whether it's uh, public transit or it's non-motorized movements or it's freight. Uh, and when we get done with the work of trying to figure out what we're going to do with the allocations that the region gets from the Federal Highway Trust Fund, we have typically had consensus, and I mean total consensus, uh, on the awarding of those funds to area, various uh, parts of the region. And the region is really a microcosm of what we're seeing nationally. We have ex-urban areas that want to see expansion of roadways and bridges. We have uh, core cities that want to see more transit and they want to see better repair of roads. We're seeing that same thing across the country. And that's the beauty of this transportation infrastructure framework, I think, is that this tends to address all of the difficulties that we face all the way across the country. And the effect of it all is that we get to end up with a system that recaptures some of the lofty uh, position that we had historically, uh, especially after the, uh, the uh, interstate highway system was constructed in the mid fifties during the Eisenhower administration. So, you know, we used to be the country that could move people and goods faster than anywhere else. Uh, but now, you know, if you, if you can get a container unloaded in Long Beach, it takes two days by rail to get it to Chicago and it takes another two days to get it through Chicago. Time is money when you're talking about transportation and for people too, the quality of life is really important. And that's why I emphasized in my remarks that uh, with transportation, it should be part of living and not part of effort. And that's one of the things I think that this bill helps accomplish. It helps set the stage across a vast universe of infrastructure, including now the virtual highway that we need to make sure that uh, everybody in America has access to broadband and fast service with uh, high capacity so that we can meet the needs of everybody uh, going into the future. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity for senators and Congress people to act together to do something for the good of the country. And the effects will be profound, not only in what we do that has a long-term impact in terms of the systems that get set up, but think about all the people that we will be working at good paying jobs in the process. So uh, this is a, a, a glorious opportunity, I would say that doesn't come along very often. And it gives us a chance now as people that are leading this country to do for people that are coming after us, what people before us did for us. Mayor Kautz, do you wanna uh, wrap things up with some kind of closing comments here and, and then we'll let everybody go? Yeah, thank you, Brian, and, and uh, to the mayors and our business partners, thank you so much for being here with us to amplify our message. And to the reporters and the media who was present, thank you, truly. We are grateful for your participation because one of the things that we do together is uh, we need people to know what's going on. And then you have heard from mayors and business leaders about why this is important for all of us. And uh, to you, Brian, and your staff, thank you for coordinating all of this. Jonathan Weinhagen, thank you for your partnership and for all that you've done to help us get this done. 
And um, Mr. Patterson, thank you for your voice. It is important uh, for the people in Minnesota to hear the voice of greater Minnesota businesses and why this is important. And so for each of the mayors uh, who have uh, participated uh, today, thank you to uh, Mayor Larson, Mayor Hovland, Mayor Norton, Mayor Calvin. Thank you so much. It is important that we stand together uh, to make sure that the infrastructure framework moves through Congress. And so let's keep watching, being vigilant, and keep on talking. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and goodbye. Thank you, Mayor Coach. Thank you.